Balitang Amerika. home in the San Francisco Bay Area is an impossible dream for some, but one talented craftsman is making some of the most beautiful houses for the area's smallest dwellers. More from Peachy Mathias. They're one of the most beautiful rustic homes in the San Francisco Bay Area. These are not models, they're actual dwellings. These one-room houses can cost anywhere from $100 to $500. That's right, dollars. And for this price, you can build a nest in the most prime real estate in the country. But don't start calling your agents just yet. It's for the birds. And this is actually a nest here. See? Bird actually used that one. My younger brother collects birdhouses, but he collects turn of the century birdhouses, which cost anywhere from $200 to $400. Mm -hmm. And so I really couldn't afford his birdhouses, so I just started making my own birdhouses. Michael Pereno has built 1,500 of these miniature abodes for his feathery friends in four years. They're all one of a kind. Most are natural wood or copper colored because birds won't nest in a brightly painted homes. Birds are always looking for camouflage. One thing Michael can't camouflage is the success the birdhouses have brought him. He's been featured in HGTV and Bay Area back roads, and his creation has been plastered in local and national magazines. The ironic part of his success that just came. is that Michael has no carpentry or architecture background. And that's, you know, that's the beauty of it, I because the less carpentry skills you have, the more rustic the birdhouse looks. Uh -huh. My Uncle Teddy, who's a carpenter, when, I, you know, when he first started working with me, all his birdhouses were perfect. Mm -hmm. And no, none of his birdhouses sold. <laughs> All the houses are approved by the Audubon Society. What that means is that they're fit for the birds. Michael says the idea to reuse discarded products like these old license plates comes from his childhood in the Philippines. Not only are these homes affordable, but they're also environmentally friendly. All the materials used are made from recycled products like driftwood, scrap metal, and old doorknobs. Gloria King bought one as a wedding gift. A she says she loves the, the idea of using things an over and over right again. There. Use them till you can't use them anymore, and so uh, he's, he's doing that for the most part. Helping the environment and bringing happiness to birds and people alike is what Michael enjoys, but he has no intention oh, of making oh, birdhouses oh, yeah, for the rest of his life. Got... He who lives by the birdhouses dies by the birdhouse, and I don't get buried in the birdhouse coffin, you know? But for now, Michael buries himself in working on them. For, for Belitung America, P.G. Mathias in Berkeley, California. The Bay Area is so beautiful, we are very lucky to live here, but it is true that this is one of the most expensive housing markets in the world. But the good news is we found a craftsman in the East Bay who's building affordable homes of all kinds. The thing is, though, they're all for the birds. He's my favorite developer in Berkeley. <laughs> kind of the Donald Trump of birds. <laughs> These are the only houses you can get in Berkeley for under half a million. These one-of-a-kind creations are all the work of Michael Pereno, builder extraordinaire of custom homes for our feathered friends. In Berkeley, everybody knows that I'm the birdhouse guy. Michael's birdhouse construction began as a small recycling project to reuse some old fence wood. But people began clamoring to buy them, and it quickly became much more than a hobby for Michael. He now boasts over 750 designs of what he calls rustic birdhouses. I have barns, I have triplexes with illegal in-law units, I have windmills, I have temples, I have asymmetric designs, I have urban landscapes. Oh, I love it. Mitchell Rose I mean, is I Michael's neighbor and one of his first customers. I personally would think she'd have them all over the place. Michael is always on the lookout for all kinds of odds and ends to use on his birdhouses. Oh, here's one here. It's got a license plate on it. This is from uh, Australia. It's got a little doorknob here that I got from Thailand. I'm gonna call this the Tiger Woods Birdhouse. The birdhouses definitely are works of art, but they're also designed to be functional. I leave little gaps here so it doesn't get flooded. 
You can see the venting right there. And the resident's well-being is always a priority. This is mainly decorative because uh, birds don't like painted birdhouses. Try to stick with natural because uh, the mother bird's looking for camouflage. But all these intricate birdhouses are not the work of Michael alone. He does have some help. These dogs actually are my co-workers. They aid in the uh, rust technology process in terms of aging the wood. It's my best employee. Employee of the month. Michael's co-workers may be a bit unorthodox, but they're not the only unusual aspect of the business. Birdhouse, anyone want to buy a birdhouse? His marketing is also a little out of the ordinary. So I have these uh, pickup trucks, and so I drive this around. I park it at really busy places. People will buy a birdhouse from them. It's part of my guerrilla marketing. And Michael's marketing seems to be working. He has clients from all over the world. I should be going in, uh, in our back garden. Oh, yeah, where's so. that? Um, back in South Africa. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Whether it's the eye-catching trucks, the creative designs, or the unusual materials, Michael's birdhouses are finding their way into the hearts and yards of the East Bay and beyond, offering birds everywhere quality housing at an affordable price. I recommend his birdhouses over any other birdhouses. <laughs> Michael has open studios and open birdhouses throughout the year. And you can always pay him a visit by appointment. For details or to find out how to buy one of his birdhouses, call our Backroads hotline or visit our websites. Welcome back to Crafters Coast to Coast. I'm Angela Martinez. Our next stop, Northern California. You're gonna meet a crafter who has a passion for birds and power tools. And this guy really knows how to make a birdhouse a home. Hi guys, welcome to Berkeley, California, the cultural epicenter of Northern California. My name is Michael Donato Pereno. I actually teach at UC Berkeley, but today I'll be giving you guys a different kind of lecture. I'll actually show you guys how to make a birdhouse. Welcome to my nest. My mission is to provide affordable housing for birds of all colors. Let's go check it out. Follow me. So this is where I do my uh, gorilla art in this 4x4 four four, uh, space. Today I'm going to make a windmill birdhouse, which was uh, inspired by my trip to Amsterdam. So the first thing I usually do is try to choose a piece of wood. I think this is a 1925 redwood right here. Okay, let's pick this one out. So the first thing I do is trace a pattern. I already have a windmill pattern here. It doesn't have to be exact. because. The whole idea is to make a rustic birdhouse. And I just take my jigsaw here. <laughs> so I cut out two patterns, one for the front and one for the back. And I usually like to use old door plates, which I get from the uh, urban recycling places in Berkeley. And what you do is just screw it in. And this is just for decoration. Birds don't really care. Power to the tools. And the important thing about making birdhouses is that the hole can't be too big so that the more invasive species like starlings and the scrub jays won't be able to invade the nest of the smaller birds. There we go. Bird's eye view. Okay, next I'm going to drill another hole two inches above the hole here. This is where the doorknob will go through. I'm using uh, the glass doorknob because uh, people like it. People think it's a diamond. So in case you have birds that want to get married, you know, you want to give them a, a glass doorknob, something that looks like a diamond. The next is I'm going to decorate the other side of the birdhouse. This is actually the back side. Just use scraps. And, you know, I like to use a lot of scraps. I never really throw anything away. Now I'm going to nail these pieces of wood here to make a window frame. Sometimes I go to the dump to get some wood, pieces of 